Hey, everybody, and welcome to a Lefty Knitter Podcast episode, oh, I'm not sure, 236? I'll correct myself here if I'm wrong. This is primarily a yarny type podcast, whether that's knitting, crocheting, spinning, weaving, etc. That is what I'm doing. My name is Aquila, and I live in Baltimore with my kids and my cats who both got baths today. Not very happy, <laughs> but they needed them. Ah, <sighs> it's all right. It's okay. It has been a very rough <clears throat> two weeks. I put up episode last week, but I don't know how much I mentioned about Hayes being sick. So I don't know if I mentioned it at all. I don't even know. The days have all melded together and I don't know what exactly is really going on anymore. It is Sunday, February 25th, just in case you need to know the day. So this is definitely late because my normal formatting, I try to record clips and put them in here and make a video of what I'm doing through the week. <sighs> if you or a family member or anyone you know has the stomach thing that's going around, luckily, okay, so first off, apparently... Everybody's getting sick right about now, and it's later than normal for whatever reason, maybe because the temperatures haven't started warming up. I, I don't even know. I was watching some doctor talk about it. Either way, um, it's all the normal things. It just seems like it's hitting everyone right now. Um, so the stomach thing that's going around, Hayes was really lucky in the fact that she really wasn't like vomiting or anything. Um, but she had this stomach pain that just wasn't going away. It was making her nauseous to get in a car. It was a really rough week. Let me just tell you. And the pediatrician just told us, you know, it can take time for your stomach to heal. Just stay on easy foods like the brat diet, etc. clear liquids. So we had been doing that and she is feeling much better. I am all gobbledygook up here. <laughs> I have a cough that, um, it, it's just, it was so persistent and you can probably hear I'm a little nasally, but I'm feeling much better. So that is why no clips really were recorded. Um, I, I did record two and I will be throwing them in here at the appropriate times, but yes. So I have to show you one more thing that John had ordered me. John had ordered me those chip bags, but he had also ordered me a skein of yarn and this was dyed by Aaron at Fiber Hustle. And this is the, uh, sorry, I should have, it's called Absolutely Live, which is a Doors album, which is, um, Aaron is very inspired by, by music albums. And I love that. I thought when he posted this and I was like, oh my God, I showed John the reel and everything. It was great. But here, this is the yarn. Look at it. Here's the logo, Fiber Hustle. And here is the yarn. Oh my goodness. I saw Carrie from the Creative Obsession also got this colorway and it's great. It's so beautiful. It's probably going to be socks. This is their 80, 20, 450 yards. It's probably going to be socks. I don't know, unless I match it up with something and make something else, but I just really think this is beautiful. So thank you, Johnny Bow. Thank you, Fiber Hustle. I. Uh, I really love it. Also, I had mentioned thread conditioner in the last episode, and I had some wonderful people message me and leave comments about it. I did end up going and buying from a local Etsy seller because I like trying to do that when possible. So I went on Etsy, and if you don't know this, you can go on Etsy and you can search by location of the shop. So that's what I did. I searched for a seller in Maryland, and I found one. So let me open this up real quick so I can get the name. They also, these are samples, because I was like, I don't know, I mean, how much thread conditioner can one person really need? So I bought samples. I was really mindful about what I was buying, and this is from Craft a Gurumi. okay? Craft a Gurumi. I will link everything down below when possible. <clears throat> I bought three samples. $3.50 for three little sample packs, and they are beeswax, and they also, some are scented. So I picked um, that and one container, because I wanted to get a container uh, to go with it. 
So it came in these little containers. It didn't come in the container, but this is the container. This one is the honey something. I can't remember. Honey, orange honeycomb. Now look at, look at how little it is. It's super cute. Like this is in the palm of my hand. My hands are not that big. So think the size of like about a quarter. I bought two other um, ones. I bought Prancing Pony, which was a patchouli scent. And then I bought an unscented. And this is how they came wrapped. And I just thought this was a great way. And it came with a guide on how to use it. So in case you are wondering, you just would take your thread. I'm just holding, using my crochet cotton to show you. <clears throat> and you would put your thread on it. You put your thumb on it. And you just pull it through. And you condition it. So I've seen people also um, then iron it afterwards. You could do it more than one time. You can do it as many times, I guess, as you feel needs to be done. I don't feel like I need to do it on this. This doesn't split as much, but I wanted to use it for my embroidery thread. It smells so good. So if you are looking for little samples, I mean, you ended up paying, I paid more shipping, I believe, than I did for the actual stuff, but that's okay. It was still under $10, and I was supporting a small um, local business, and I just thought that was the way to handle the situation that I was in. I just wanted to try it, because you know, I, I don't foresee myself needing a ton of thread conditioner. But I never know when I might need it, and I will now have it on hand. I just kept it in a little bag that it was sent in. It was sent in another mailer, but just so I could show you guys. Okay. When I'm talking, I'm starting to get, like, phlegmy, so I apologize. Lots of water. Keep hydrated. Flush your system. If, if you haven't drank enough water today, go get yourself a cup of water. Okay, I talked about the Novemberist hat. I got to where the decreases would be and I was putting it on my head and it was way bigger than I thought it was. I thought it was. And I wasn't happy and I ripped it out. So it was not easy to rip out because I was holding fingering weight double. I ended up putting it on cones because you know I have a circular sock machine so my plan is with this yarn because it didn't it wasn't gonna work out for that hat it just wasn't gonna work I'm gonna make myself a pair of socks so that's why it is now on cones and I'm gonna put it right here on my stool and hopefully maybe today if I get a chance I'm gonna crank myself a fun pair of socks so I felt really bad because that was gonna be my entry for um, Black History Month make along with Liz, the black knitter. It's the hashtag, and I'll put that because I can't remember. Black History MAL 2024, I believe. Um, and if you're not following, I think entries are good through the end of the month. I'm not even quite sure. But if it's a black designer, a black bag maker, a black yarn dyer, a black, did I say designer? There was a I'm sh a black yarn shop owner. Uh, there's probably other qualifications. You should go watch Liz. I'll make sure I keep her link down below. Well, I was really sad because I wanted that hat. <laughs> but let me insert a video here because I did video before I ripped it out. Hey friends, I am popping this on here because I'm going to be ripping this out. I am not happy with it. It's way big. I didn't check gauge because, well, it's a hat, so I didn't check gauge. But um, it's not way big. It's a little big, but I'm not happy. Um, I got up to, this was the last repeat. I put it on, and then it was supposed to be like 20 rows for the decreases, and it was just going to not be right. So I inserted my needles thinking I was going to take one repeat out. And I just am not happy. I put it on bigger needles, and now that it's on bigger needles and not so squished up, I realized how much I'm not really happy with it. So it's getting ripped out, and I just wanted to show you guys, you know, not you don't always have success, and you can rip things out. And, you know, I thought, I thought I'd just finish it and then donate it, but I really... I. Even don't, I don't think it would have been the right fitting hat for anybody unless you have a way big head. And the gauge is not right after I looked at gauge and then measured my gauge. So I don't think this yarn is going to work for this hat in particular. So 
I'm going to dive in my stash again and see what else I have in a DK. I mean, because I was holding this double. It's going to be a mess. <laughs> it's not going to be fun to rip out, but I'm going to do it. It's going to it's gonna work out. And that's where I'm at. So, yeah. I do like the hat a lot, and I enjoyed knitting it, obviously. I knit it super fast. I just think I'm going to um, maybe look for a, an actual DK. This held together made a, a way thicker DK. And then I thought maybe holding it as a fingering weight, but I just don't want to do all the math to do that. So I'm just not going to. I'll find yarns to work. And yeah, thanks friends for joining me on this journey and then ripping it out. I'm not going to video that, but it would be very frustrating <laughs> just to watch. I decided to pull out some DK weight yarn that I had in my stash. Now this one, I'm not quite sure what it is or if it's DK. I think I used this in another sweater that I made from Casapinka. And I'm not quite sure if that's this yarn or not. I'd have to pull the sweater out and compare it. This is what I used for the main. I think this is more of a sport weight, but that's okay. I used this as my main color for the, because I, I recast on that hat. I want it. I wanted it so bad. I wear the other one all the time. And I wanted this hat by Vanessa Smith, the November's hat. Use a size six needle and <clears throat> you're supposed to do a provisional cast on and fold it over and like do the double brim. I didn't do that. I just did a rib and then fold it over and picked up the cast on edge, which was totally fine. I'll show you that in a minute. And then I had these other yarns picked out. I don't have any of the third yarn. So I had these two yarns, and then I had another yarn that was like, and I can't remember all the yarns. I'll try to rem link them in my Ravelry page and link the Ravelry page. This one I know is Marigold Jen. So I used these and a third yarn that was like darker with both of these colors in it. It was called something alligator, rainbow alligator by fiber seed is that right I'm not sure if that's right okay it was dyed by her son though I do remember that and I loved that hat I made out of that yarn I believe I made a hat out of that yarn goodness gracious either way I cast this on I pulled this out too thinking I might end up using this but I didn't end up using the tweed at all so I gotta put all these away so let me show you. I don't have my ends woven in, but I'm considered th considering this a finished object. I have a stitch marker on here because that's where I started my, my beginning of round. So I did a folded brim with a rib because I was going to do just a single rib and not fold it, but I ended up folding it because this yarn was a little bit thinner. It needed um, the thickness. I needed to double it up. So like I said, this is that blue yarn. This is the yarn in between that had both colors in it. This was that more solid um, magenta. Then I went back to the one that was mixed and then went back to the blue. How good is this? I love it so much. I should have known to take out one of the increases. It calls for, or not increase, uh, the repeats of the pattern. When I made it the first time, I knew it was too tall, but I thought maybe it won't be so bad because I'm using the right yarn now. I should have taken a repeat out, but I didn't. But it still fits well enough that I'm going to wear the heck out of this. So let's put it on. It is a little tall, like I said, but... I can technically fold this up and it doesn't look bad. And I love it so much. And even if I wear it down, I don't care if it's pulled up on my head a little and I can just slouch it down a little bit. It is so good. I love it so much. I would love to make this hat a third time. In even another set of colors. I love how these faded together. They turned out so good. So good. So that's done. And I'm very excited that I persisted and cast on again because I love it. Now I gotta fix my hat hair. Okay, there we go. Yay! 
<clears throat> All right, so I'm going to pause here and insert video. All right, proof that I did bind off John's sweater, but he don't like how wide it is. And it's, it wasn't quite long enough. So I am going to measure so I can make it longer based on, he, he probably wants like two more inches, but I got to make it skinnier too. So I'm going to probably rip back almost to the chest and start doing some decreases on the edges and bring it in. And... Yeah, that's a, a proof of life that it is. it was done and it's going to get ripped out. But I want to get working on it and I would just want to show you guys. So, here we go. Object number two being ripped out. But this one, not fully. So, wah, wah, wah. So, I ripped out two things in the matter of like seven days. I didn't rip this all the way out. I did rip almost to the armpits. I was on Barb's Flame and Fiber. Barb from Flame and Fiber has a Zoom once a month on a Saturday. <clears throat> it was yesterday. I was ripping it out on the Zoom call. So let's show you. I ripped out a whole ball. Here's what I ripped out. I'll show you how much I ripped out. I ripped out a whole ball. This was one whole skein and this. And I am at the point where I need to add this back in because I knit... Um, I kind of ripped it out to where I had joined this because it was close to where I thought I was going to rip it out. So I need to decrease on the sides where this there's a faux seam and I'm going to decrease there and bring it in and then make it longer. So I'll just show you guys where I'm at. I'll put a marker in so we can relook at it again as we continue this journey. I just don't want to make a garment that John's not going to wear. And I'm not mad. I'm not mad at all because it was real boxy on him. I should have got a video of him in it. And he just, he was like, it's a little boxy. And it was too short. So over, I mean, I would have had to lengthen it anyway. But I was like, if I'm going to lengthen it, I might as well rip it back out and decrease on the sides. So there's like a faux seam in this sweater under the armpits. Can you see that? faux seam it's like one purl stitch and it's I have two markers there so I know to purl that stitch I'm just gonna decrease on either side of that faux seam and just decrease I need to get rid of like four inches which I'm getting about five to six stitches per inch so I need to get rid of between five uh, 20 and 24 stitches so I'm just gonna de do a decrease round and do like two or three rounds and then another decrease round so wah, wah, wah. It's not too bad though. You can see that I didn't rip all the length out of the body. So we'll keep working on that. That's off to the side. I'm not going to talk much more about that, but that is the autumn league pullover. Cause I didn't mention, I don't know if I mentioned that in the actual video and I have one more thing to show you guys and then we'll be done. I got a decent amount of work done on this and this is so exciting. And I might have to take up the offer from Froggit to get more yarn. I'm not sure if I'm going to need this. I'm going to see how far this will get me and see what the shawl looks like there. Because you can stop this shawl really at any point. You can extend it and keep going. So I am going to just see how far it gets me. I am on the... Hold on. How many sections? Let's see. This is one, two... Three, I'm on the fourth section. So when you guys last saw this, I had gotten, here, we'll go from this way, because this is how much I had gotten done, where that stitch marker is. That's my, my natty bow from Jig. So I'd gotten here, okay? And then it keeps going. And I did modify it, the pattern, like I said I was going to, for the wider stripes, I decided I was going to do a, a stockinette stitch to accentuate the yarn. So that's a wider stitch for the contrast color, which is the boucle yarn. And then when this section three had the wider strips was the other yarn, I 
used the stockinette stitch to keep it continuous. And now I'm on this section, which has really wide sections of the boucle, and it looks so good. And I have to do, I think, one more repeat of this wide section, and then I'm on to the next section. So <clears throat> I'm really happy with this. It's really hard to kind of hold it up and show you with the needles on it, but it's so cool. I just think with these bumps sticking out, it looks really cool with the ridges sticking out from the stockinette sections. I just think that really looks neat. And no, I, I'm not faulting. Like, there's no fault of the design. I just wanted to do it because I thought it would make... I thought you would be able to see the yarn, which is the whole point of this. It's a sample knit. I want you to be able to see the individual yarns in the sample. And you can't always see what a yarn is going to look like in if it's all in garter. Um, I love being able to see a yarn knit up in stockinette stitch. So I just think that looks fantastic. All right. That's what I have to show you guys. This is the painted pebble shawl, by the way, because I don't think I mentioned that. It'll be down below. I mentioned that I was reading Cinder. I finished Cinder and I'm now on the next book of that series. It's called The Lunar Chronicles and I am on the second book now which is called Scarlet. There's I believe four books total and then there's some novellas that um, are backstories of some of the, the other characters that aren't the main characters and I do want to hopefully be able to listen to all of them whether it's on I use Scribd which is now a new name I can't remember what it's called and I also use Libby which is the library's free app if you have a library card you should check into your uh, with your library there's most of them have apps that you can link your library card to and you can use like you can read ebooks and you can read uh, listen to audiobooks so just in case you didn't know that most I think libraries have that sort of functionality so just so you know so i'm now on the second book and i started watching firefly over because i haven't watched it in years and if you've not watched firefly it was by joss wheaton it only got two seasons and they didn't really get to round up the story so then they made a movie called serenity and i loved it so much and i just thought that show was so good and it was so funny because at some point in the show, there's a guy, character named Jane, and he has this hat that's like red, orange, and yellow, and it's an ear flap hat, and it was like all the freaking rage. It was a knit hat, and the knitting world went crazy. Crazy. I think I knit three of them years ago. I mean, it's been years. I might have to just make myself a Jane hat, because why not? We haven't gotten to that episode where he's wearing it, but I think I might have to just make myself a Jane hat because I just, I love that show. I love, uh, J John is not a huge fan of sci-fi stuff, so he uh, never saw it, and I thought about waiting to rewatch it with him, but I don't think he's really interested. I have a cat that's very interested in saying hello. She got a bath today, and she was not happy. This is Luna, by the way. She is our tripod cat. She is missing one of her back legs. We don't know why, so we just make up fun stories. Right? <laughs> Dead eyes. Jeez, cat. You're not going to be happy? You're purring. <laughs> She's a great kitty cat. She's probably going to get try to get in all kinds of trouble. So that's what I've been watching. Oh, what's really funny, though, is I was like, let me try this show on Netflix because I was like in between not knowing what to watch. And I was like, Resident Alien. OK, let's watch that. And I'm watching it. And it's it's very weird. It's very it's not a kid show. Do not think it's a kid show. Do not let your kids watch it. I, it looked like it could have been like okay for kids, but it's, it's really not. Some of the references are, are not, not kid friendly. Um, but it's so weird and I don't know the actor's name, but the main character in Resident Alien, sorry, there's Cat Fluff because she, I combed her and she is still floofing everywhere. He is the pilot 
in Firefly. I'm like, but he was like much younger. Cause I mean, this is like 20 years ago. I'm like, holy crap. It's the same actor. I'll insert a picture here of both when he was in Firefly and in Resident Alien. And I'm just like, how weird is it that I was like, let's watch Firefly. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I, I know who that is. That's so weird. I just been watching him. Ugh. I am not one of those, like, it's the seven degrees of Kevin Bacon or whatever, but I am no good at remembering actors' names, characters' names. I'm really bad at all that. So, like, don't put me in a movie trivia, like, contest. Don't, uh, don't invite me on your team. I, I'm no good. I am no good. All right. So that's everything I have to share with you today. I hope everybody is well, is as well as they can be. Um, like I said, sicknesses are all on the rise again, whether it's like, um, the, the big C coronavirus word, or whether it's like the influenza A or B or whatever it is, or just, uh, all the different colds you can get, rhinovirus, the flu, etc. Did I already, oh, whatever. Just take good care of yourself. Take some extra vitamins if you need to, you know, get rest when you need to. Uh, that is one thing I did not do. I pushed myself way too hard. And I think that's why I ended up getting, I was sick and then I felt a little better and then I was pushing myself and then I was like super sick. So if you can get rest, I know not all of us have the privilege to just sit and rest, but if you can, please take advantage of that. Um, if you're not feeling well, because you will heal so much faster. All right. Uh, check in on your friends and your family and your loved ones and people that you haven't seen maybe post. Just do a quick hey or send a funny meme and just check on them and, you know, all that stuff. And until the next episode, peace, love, and happy crafting. Bye. My phone decided to come back on while I was putting away... DK weight yarns. I probably have the label for that in here somewhere. Maybe I don't. This is just scraps. DK weight scraps. <laughs>